Welcome to module seven. In this module, we're making a subtle shift. Up to now, you've been focused on learning a bit more about the underlying science of climate change, a better understanding of radiative forcing, carbon cycles, and climate models will help you to now switch gears a bit and think about the impacts of climate change. For the rest of the course, we'll be more interested in the implications of climate change for both the planet and for humans, and also potential response options that we have at our disposal. This module will introduce you to some of the impacts of climate change. There's a lot to know here and new data is coming in every day, so our focus will just be a sample of the key issues. This lecture is the first in this module and provides an introduction to a few terms before we move on to an examination of climate change impacts in human and in natural systems. Before we delve into the climate change impacts on human and natural systems that we're already seeing, it's important first to equip ourselves with a few core concepts. First, we'll be introduced to impacts as a damage report on human activity. Next, we'll develop precise definitions of three very important and interrelated concepts, vulnerability, adaptive capacity, and resilience. You'll see these terms sprinkled throughout the climate change impacts and adaptation videos and readings that you'll do in this module and also in module nine. Finally, the lecture will wrap up with a look at the uncertainties we face in assessing climate change impacts. When we speak of climate change impacts, we're referring to those phenomena that occur as a result of rising temperatures and shifting precipitation patterns. In other words, temperature and precipitation changes are the first order effects of a changing climate. The second order effects are driven by these signals, such as longer growing seasons, endangered species, or human health repercussions during heat waves in cities. As you can see, these impacts can be either positive or negative. In fact, in some parts of the world, we expect that climate change could create some benefits in the near term, although it's uncertain how long these benefits might last. We can think about impacts as chains of causation. Rising sea levels, for instance, are a second order impact of increasing temperatures and occurs primarily as a result of melting land-based glaciers and also the thermal expansion of water. These rising sea levels then can lead to flooding, erosion damage, and altered ecosystem distribution, what we might actually call third order impacts of climate change. In other words, climate change impacts are the damage report that results from the mass combustion of fossil fuels and present monumental challenges to both human and natural systems. We're only beginning to grasp the extent of climate change impacts and significant uncertainty remains. The jagged red line on this graph shows the observed temperature record from 1900 to approximately 2005. Stretching out from this red line are two black lines that encompass the universe of scenarios that we've generated to help us understand what level of warming we could expect in a high emissions future versus a low emissions one. As you can see, many scientists believe that we're already committed to at least two to two and a half degrees of warming, regardless of how quickly we reduce our emissions. The worst case scenario leads to accelerated warming beyond our control and beyond the capacity of natural systems to adapt. At each level of warming, we expect to see significant impacts from climate change, including coral reef bleaching, a decline in crop yields, and species extinction. Vulnerability to climate change impacts is the convergence of exposure to impacts and also sensitivity to them. In other words, we generally not consider a system highly vulnerable if it's really sensitive, but it's also very unlikely to experience impacts of any kind. We can think of a couple really easy examples here. You may live in a house that's built low to the ground without stilts or drainage ditches protecting it. If your house is nowhere near the coastline or not on a floodplain, you could think of your house as very sensitive, but not at all exposed. This map shows the distribution of vulnerability around the globe in a high temperature future. When we take into account both sensitivity and exposure to climate change impacts. As you can see, China, India, and large parts of Africa are likely to be exposed to significant impacts in this scenario and are also very sensitive to them. This is especially true when we take into account the capacity of some of these developing nations and emerging economies to adapt to climate change impacts. The criteria shown here help us to identify key vulnerabilities to climate change impacts. When we apply these criteria to human and natural systems around the world, we see that coastal systems, food, 
fresh water supply and infrastructure are particularly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change as we move into this uncertain future. Generally speaking, developing countries are considered more vulnerable than developed countries, both because of the magnitude of impacts we expect to see in those regions and the lowered potential for adaptation. Coastal systems are also particularly vulnerable because of the high likelihood and high magnitude of impacts. This very simple diagram illustrates that true vulnerability is also influenced by adaptive capacity, an important concept when it comes to the human dimensions of climate change. Adaptive capacity is an important element of vulnerability, and it's usually used to refer to human systems rather than natural ones. Although we will deal with this in greater detail later on, the ingredients of adaptive capacity appear to be financial resources, technological resources, human capital like education, and social capital, which uh, is networks of trust and collaboration between groups. We have to keep in mind that adaptive capacity still represents a potential to respond to climate change. A multitude of factors can intervene and influence actual decisions to use scarce resources to adapt to climate change. So adaptive capacity influences vulnerability in a very real way, but doesn't necessarily tell us whether a region or system will, in the end, suffer climate change impacts. Before we move on, answer the following quiz question. Another term that you will likely hear often in discussions of impacts and adaptation is that of resilience. While adaptive capacity generally refers to the ability of human systems to respond to climate change, resilience is often used to refer to the ability of natural systems to return to a healthy state following a change or a shock. Resilience in an ecological system can mean a couple of things though. It can mean that an ecosystem is equipped to weather a storm, so to speak, and not really change at all after a shock or a stress. It can also mean that an ecosystem reorganizes or changes in some way after a shock, but still performs essentially the same function. The resilience of a system depends on its coping range or the amount of change it can absorb without fundamentally shifting. Adaptation helps to expand this coping range, raising the threshold beyond which the system changes and enhancing resilience. Enhanced resilience means that the system is less vulnerable to climate change impacts. The idea of resilience grew out of the field of ecology, but it's now being applied to human systems as well. Uncertainty remains high in our assessment of climate change impacts for a number of very good reasons. First, many impacts are contingent on what we decide to do about greenhouse gas emissions. Clearly, this is still in negotiation and will not likely have a clear picture of our long-term emissions future anytime soon. Second, we're beginning to explore the possibility of reaching major thresholds beyond which warming accelerates uncontrollably and our planet is fundamentally altered. We do not yet understand enough about these thresholds, if we're reaching one and what our options are if we do. Third, and maybe most obviously, natural systems are highly complex and interwoven. We don't completely understand the nature of ecosystems coping ranges and also what can be done to enhance their resilience. So we have to produce multiple scenarios of impacts that help us to understand the various futures we might be facing. Uncertainty grows as we move from emission scenarios to the response of the global climate to impacts on systems. Many scientists, however, argue that we need to get comfortable with uncertainty. We'll never be able to flawlessly predict the behavior of human and natural systems but climate change mitigation and adaptation are nevertheless essential. Give this a little thought and go to the discussion board to share your perspective with your classmates. In this lecture, we've been introduced to a few concepts that will help us to explore climate change impacts and from there delve into climate change adaptation and mitigation. Climate change impacts have been shown to be the damage report or second and third order effects of a changing climate. Vulnerability was defined as the degree to which a system is susceptible to and unable to cope with adverse impacts. Vulnerability represents the convergence of exposure and sensitivity, but is also influenced by adaptive capacity and resilience. Adaptive capacity is the ability or potential of a system to successfully respond to climate variability and change, 
while the related concept of resilience is the amount of change a system can undergo without changing state. Finally, we discussed major sources of uncertainty and posed the question of whether or not we should take action in spite of significant uncertainty.